This is going to be a really big, big treat for most of you today. All right? So let's make it one. Fatima's group, would you like to follow Fatima down? Year four children from Bowes Primary in North London are setting off on a school trip. They're leaving behind their classroom that overlooks the busy North Circular Road and heading out to the country. A staggering 80% of the class has never set foot in the English countryside before, even though it's only a short drive away. The country has a lot um, of grass and not as much buildings as where we live. There's lots and lots of buildings and there's not as much space. I've never been to the countryside and I think I'm going to see a lot of animals. I haven't been to the countryside before. Today they're visiting a nature reserve run by the RSPB to spend time not only looking up birds, but at insects and pond life too. OK then, come on then, follow us. In the river, Lou. Learning outside the classroom is the, the best way to learn because you're, you're seeing things hands-on, you're seeing links between things that you can't otherwise imagine. And then... Trips are vital, they're absolutely vital. So, everyone will follow me. That's the way. Come on, everyone. It's really important for children to get in touch with nature, to have hands-on experience of the countryside. If they don't, they're never going to learn to appreciate the countryside, they won't value it and therefore they won't be able to protect it. So coming to a nature reserve is a really good way to get children in touch with nature and to get them to really understand and love the environment. So now I'm going to show you how to pond it without falling in the water, OK? So the first rule is whenever you pond it, I want you to kneel down like this, OK? Kneeling down, always at least one knee on the ground. The RSPB is one of numerous charities and organisations involved in promoting out-of-classroom opportunities for children. That's it, a nice tip. Its reserve at Rye Meads is only a 45-minute drive from London, but getting schools to visit isn't always easy. One of the problems in trying to persuade schools to come out to nature reserves is that they're very concerned about health and safety. And uh, in order to allay their fears, we have risk assessed all our activities. All our field teachers are fully trained. They've all had CRB checks done, so they're fully police checked. They all have first aid certificates. Look at here, Nossie. Cool, there's lots of stuff. Um, I've got fish. I've got a ramshorn snail and a pond snail. Look, what's that? The children will get a huge amount out of a day like today because it makes, first and foremost, it makes learning fun. They're out of the classroom, they're in the open air, um, and that for any child is, is, a, is, a, is a great start. But apart from that, this whole hands-on thing where they can actually see Excellent. and see creatures that they've never imagined, you know, existed, um, but not just see them, but pick them out of a pond, you know, um, look at them, examine them, learn about them. They, the, the very fact they're doing it like that is that their, their learning is going to be much more reinforced. It's much deeper, it's much, it's much more meaningful. Teachers sometimes voice concerns about not having the depth of knowledge they feel they need for such a field trip. I think teachers have um, a natural concern. Um, they may be bringing uh, children and young people into an environment that they're not particularly au fait with or comfortable with, um, which is why the professionals that work here um, can help them with that. Now we've come into our special mini beast area and I want you to just sitting where you are, just have a look round because we've got lots and lots of different habitats all around here. We help teachers by first of all liaising and letting them know that we're going to be taking care of all the education while they're at our sites. And in addition to that, we also provide them with follow-up work to help make the work that we've done on the reserve much more relevant to the stuff they've been learning in the classrooms. You've got a question? Are there any poisonous little creatures? They're not poisonous so that they could hurt us. 
but they might be poisonous to the creatures that they might want to eat. We don't need to worry about their poisonous and hurting us. These things are so tiny that these things really are not going to hurt us in a dangerous way. I think the RSPB provides a service both before the students come out to visit um, and afterwards. So they actually work with the teachers to find out what it is that they want, what they might be worried about and what we can actually do to help ease those worries and to help them with all the processes um, and the paperwork that goes along with taking groups of children outside. This is his head here. Yeah, and... That end. And he stretches, doesn't he? Yeah. It's coming down. It is. Do you know why? Why? Because he doesn't like the sunshine. He's trying to get somewhere that's dark and cool. I think some teachers are not confident enough because they feel they haven't got that knowledge. But all you need to do is to visit a centre like Rymead beforehand and see what good resources they have in terms of their own teaching staff. That, you know, that, that it shouldn't worry you. And also it's a great opportunity for you to extend your own knowledge. Um, which you, you, know, you can bring back and use in the classroom. We're going to be really gentle when we lift it up. Okay, now, these creatures are called amphibians. What it means is that they spend some of their time on the land and some of their time in the pond. It's like a lizard. But oh, there's a bird. We thought, I've heard of a newt before and Matilda. I think teachers too often feel that they have to be all knowledgeable about everything and that, I, I don't think that's correct at all. I think it's good that you learn along with your children. I think that's a really um, beneficial um, thing for your children to see. And I would say to any teacher, this, do not be afraid, just do it. I've got a centipede in here and it was very fast to catch. I think it's better learning here because you get to actually see the thing instead of just people set telling you. You can actually look instead of just learning about them. You can look at them and watch how they move and what their habitats are. And almost everything about them. And I think there's about 20 legs on the centipede. About 30. Come on then! Yay! Out of classroom learning enables teachers to show children that healthy living is about more than doing sports. It can also be as simple as taking a walk to look at birds. So looking out here, can you see these lovely blackbirds with the white beaks? These are called coots and they're specially designed or adapted for diving into the water what do you think they might eat? Seaweed. Seaweed. Are we at the seaside? Mm. No. Where Please. this is like a pond, isn't it? So what kind of weed do you think it is? Pond. Pond, pond weed. weed. That's right. That's On your chart, you can tick off the coot. Hey, I can see that swan right at the back. They're called mute swans, and they have really long necks so that they can reach down to the bottom of the pond to get their weed. That bird's eating. I'm not sure what it's eating though. Yeah. Oh look, he's swimming with his head down in the water. <laughs> they put their head in the water and the tail at the top. And they just do a flip over. We can see swans and we can see probably coots and more hens. Where I live I see probably robins and pigeons. There's more birds here than where we live. Everything we did today connects with the curriculum. There are, I mean, there's a huge number of skills involved in doing a trip like that anyway. They have to, you know, they're working with a partner, they're talking, speaking, listening, all that kind of thing. Their science-based knowledge will, will increase enormously. Um, and then they will have this, this sort of huge sort of inspirational type learning which will help them in their literacy, um, in, in their geography, in their history, any of these kind of topics that we're doing. The 
funnest part probably was when we went pond dipping because we found really cool creatures and probably my favourite one would be a fish leech because they were so straight and weird. I really like when um, we went bird watching because when you had the binoculars on it looked like you were really up close to them. You've all got to go into role. You're all going to be a mini beast of some kind and you unfortunately are about to lose your habitat. Your habitat, your wildlife reserve is going to disappear. Come to the Habitat Hunting Agency and tell me what kind of a habitat it is you need. We'll try and build on, on what we get out of a trip in the classroom, in the days that followed, in, in all kinds of ways. Um, initially, we will probably use it as a good speaking and listening activity and some kind of drama, um, which will, will allow the children to uh, role play some of the creatures they saw um, and use that as a means of, um, you know, just assessing how much learning went on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What can I do to help you? We're looking for a home. What kind of home are you looking for? A kind of damp, damp home. Mm -hmm. Damp. Anything um, else? We prefer Dark. it to be under a log. Drama and role play is something we use quite a lot and the children love it and it's a great follow-up activity you know, for something that's been hands-on um, like the, the, the wildlife centre. Is it a wood lice? Are you wood lice? Yes. Well done, wood lice. Give them a clap. But we also have to follow up curriculum-wise um, with, with science activities, you know, more activities within the classroom that, that they can be allowed to do themselves in their own way, investigations, all that kind of thing. Um, and it will comp really enthuse that. It will really, really give them the ideas that they need to, um, to do something much, you know, much more, much deeper and much more uh, effective than they would have otherwise done. I say the pond dipping was best because there was lots of different animals in there that I've never seen and they had lots of legs and they were all slimy and it took me away from my fear about all of those slimy creatures and stuff and I wasn't scared no more. I quite liked the um, when we were, got our nets and we were fishing for um, little underwater creatures and I quite liked when we were looking around and seeing what we had got in our bowls. Things I liked the most was pond dipping and bird watching but mostly bird watching. I learned a lot because I learned all the birds and I learned all the insects what, um, what were in the pond. My favourite activity was bird watching because he learnt new birds like coot and moorhen and the best thing I saw was a swan putting their big neck into the water and one of them was flapping their wings. It was nice to be outside then in class because then you learn about um, the, like the, the wild and all the animals. Thank you.